And she whoops the tar out of me. Well, what do you mean? Well, she's all the time wrestling me down, getting a toehold or an arm lock on. The unexpected success of this rags to riches sitcom captivated audiences throughout the 60s as the Clampets made their way to Beverly Hills. From the very first episode, the show seemed to strike a chord, blending humor with the charm of its rustic characters. Over nine seasons, from 1962 to 1971, the series not only entertained viewers but also sparked countless rumors, particularly re regarding the enigmatic Ellie Mae. Behind the scenes, whispers circulated about her budding romance with co-star Max Baer Jr., who played Jethro, creating a buzz that added to the show's allure. Fans speculated about the behind-the-scenes dynamics, fueling intrigue around her personal life and on-set antics. The juxtaposition of her down-to-earth persona with the glamorous Hollywood lifestyle led to an array of stories. Some far-fetched, others surprisingly close to reality. This mix of genuine affection and playful gossip became part of the fabric of the series, making it a staple of American television lore. Mike Clampett going to all this trouble to surprise me with a hillbilly party. He's a wonderful man. In 1962, the Beverly Hillbillies introduced a theme song that has become iconic. Today, the Clampets are household names, and almost everybody can sing along with that infectious theme song about Texas tea and swimming pools. The theme song, The Ballad of Jed Clampett, originally debuted in episode two, with the pilot using a song called Banjo Signal. Fans of the show still remember the catchy tune that set the stage for the adventures of the Clampett family as they navigated life in Beverly Hills. The theme song perfectly captured the essence of the show and has remained a beloved part of television history. The Beverly Hillbillies theme song continues to resonate with audiences, proving its lasting impact on popular culture. Who's in it? According to Pearl, it's got the two biggest actors there is, Francis. In 1962, the Beverly Hillbillies rose to number one in the ratings within three weeks of its premiere a remarkable feat that remains unmatched in television history. This classic show remained at the top spot for two solid years, capturing the hearts of audiences across the nation. However, a big blunder by CBS led to all 36 episodes of the first season, and the first 19 episodes of the second season falling into the public domain because CBS failed to renew their copyright. This mistake inadvertently allowed the show to reach an even wider audience through various platforms, cementing its legacy in television history. The Beverly Hillbillies continues to be celebrated for its humor, charm, and timeless appeal, making it a beloved classic of American television. Dave. <laughs> All right. That's the Public domain. Episodes of the Beverly Hillbillies have been released into the home video market and DVD market by many low-budget labels. The original theme music has been replaced by generic music to avoid copyright issues. This classic show's episodes are now accessible to viewers through these alternative channels, allowing fans to enjoy the humor and antics of the beloved Clampett family. <laughs> Enough of this ridiculous nonsense. Are we going to... Buddy Ebsen was offered the role of Jed on the strength of his performance in a similar role in Breakfast at Tiffany's from 1961. The role of Jed Clampett was originally written to be an extremely naive hit, but Buddy Ebsen said he wouldn't play it that way. He only agreed to do the show if it was rewritten. Jed might be uneducated, but he wasn't foolish. This classic centers around the Clampett family, who strike it rich, and move from their rural home to Beverly Hills, bringing their down-to-earth charm to the glamorous setting. With Jed at the helm as the wise and kind patriarch, the show captured hearts with its humor and warmth. Excuse me, Paul, operator. In 1962, the Beverly Hillbillies introduced the character of Jethro as the one who often delivered the more comedic and simple-minded lines. To accurately depict the Clampett Holmes exterior, an agreement was necessary between Filmways Productions and Arnold Kirkaby for utilizing the Kirkaby Mansion for filming purposes. This classic show cleverly utilized Jethro as a source of humor while seamlessly incorporating real-world locations 
like the Kirkaby Mansion, to bring the Clampett family's residence to life. The partnership between the production company and the mansion owner enabled the show to capture the essence of the Clampett's extravagant yet humorously naive lifestyle against the backdrop of the mansion's grandeur. Don't need nobody to shove you. You just can't wait to get married. How do you feel that way about Sonny? In 1962, the Beverly Hill Billies had a unique mansion agreement and closing credits. The agreement required the grounds to be cleaned after filming, with the mansion's address kept secret. As each episode ended in the last six seasons, Donna Douglas, as Ellie Mae Clampett, would thank viewers, promising to return at the same time on the same channel. This classic show's behind-the-scenes details added a touch of mystery and consistency to its production. With each week's episode, viewers were left with fond anticipation for the next installment. I guess you're not in a very romantic mood. A little music will remedy that. In 1962, the TV series introduced a unique touch with Ellie May announcing it was a filmways presentation just before commercial breaks. Notably, the esteemed B. Benedict, a veteran character actress and voice artist, was the initial consideration for the role of Granny. However, she was deemed unsuitable due to being too large and busty for the image they saw. This decision paved the way for another actress who would bring Granny to life in a different light. Well, I'd he brother stay here. Well, Pearl says there's going to be a brand new picture from Hollywood called, uh, Ben-Hur. Irene Ryan was suggested for her role by B. Benedict, and her screen test blew everyone away. The actor who portrayed Mr. Drysdale, Raymond Bailey, maintained a close relationship with Nancy Culp, even after the show ended, with Culp being one of the few people who visited Bailey as he battled Alzheimer's. The Beverly Hillbillies showcased Ryan's brilliant performance and Bailey's enduring friendship with Culp beyond the screens, adding depth to the legacy of the iconic series. The bond between the cast members extended far beyond the show's run, highlighting the genuine connections formed during the production. Mighty kindly if we did. He says he ain't got no use for him. I don't like him myself. In the TV series, Raymond Bailey's nickname for Nancy Culp was Slim. At the end of the opening credits, Jed points to a billboard for Kellogg's Corn Flakes, the show's sponsor, and in other openings, they drive past a Winston cigarette truck. This classic captures the charm and humor of a rural family suddenly transplanted to Beverly Hills. The interactions between the characters provide plenty of comedic moments, making it a beloved favorite for audiences of all ages. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the hillbilly antics in this entertaining series that has stood the test of time. Ooh, he's awful handy at lifting and toting, and he could drive you out in my truck. The TV series originally filmed in black and white for the first three seasons. The first color episode aired on September 15, 1965. Milburn Drysdale's bank was the fictitious Commerce Bank of Beverly Hills, likely borrowed from the actual Commerce Bank in Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, She's preparing to paint a family portrait, and she wishes to know if you all will sit for her. In 1962, the TV series, originally titled The Hillbillies of Beverly Hills, came to life. Viewers quickly discovered that the standout of the series each week was Donna Douglas portraying Ellie May, a young mother and aspiring actress. Donna Douglas landed the role of Ellie May while navigating her own challenges in Hollywood, adding depth and authenticity to her character portrayal. Her performance resonated with audiences, making Ellie May a beloved character in this classic sitcom. Donna Douglas's charisma and talent brought Ellie May to life in a way that captivated viewers and solidified her as an iconic figure in television history. This classic series remains a favorite among fans who cherish the heartfelt performances and captivating storyline brought to life by Donna Douglas as Ellie May. In folks have certain rights. Family comes first. He sure is proud of that family name, ain't he? Starting with the early roles of Donna Douglas, she made a name for herself before becoming a beloved cast member on the show. She appeared on various variety programs, showcasing her talent in performances on The Perry Como Show and The Steve Allen Show. 
Her versatility was further highlighted when she co-starred in a memorable episode of the 1960s Twilight Zone, titled Eye of the Beholder. This episode is well known for its commentary on beauty and societal standards, and Douglas's role helped cement her status as an actress capable of handling complex themes. During the initial years of filming, there were amusing rumors circulating about the cast, particularly concerning Irene Ryan, who played Granny. Some speculated that Irene was younger than Donna Douglas, which was quite ironic given their character dynamics. However, these rumors were completely unfounded. In reality, Irene Ryan was born in 1902, while Douglas was born in 1932, making her significantly younger. This contrast between their ages added to the charm of their on-screen relationship, showcasing the brilliance of casting in this classic. The dynamic between them not only entertained audiences, but also created a memorable legacy in television history that continues to be cherished. Your behaves might different than we used to. I know you're carrying a heavy load on it. In 1962, the Beverly Hillbillies premiered on television screens across America. This classic show brought laughter and joy to households with its quirky characters and hilarious situations. One of the show's stars, Buddy Ebsen, often found humor in a persistent rumor about his character. He would joke and expressed disbelief at the idea that people actually believe such a wild tale. Despite the fame and success of the show, Ebsen's good-natured response to this rumor only added to the charm of the beloved series. The Beverly Hillbillies will always be remembered for its unique characters, comedic moments, and enduring popularity. This is Marie, this is Drysdale's upstairs girl. Marie? The Beverly Hillbillies is a classic TV show that first premiered in 1962. It follows the story of the Clampett family, who strike it rich when they discover oil on their land in the Ozark. The family decides to move to Beverly Hills, California, where they encounter the lifestyle of the rich and famous. The main characters include Jed Clampett, the family patriarch, Granny, his feisty mother-in-law, Jethro, his dim-witted nephew, and Ellie May, his sweet daughter. The show was well received by audiences and won several awards for its humor and unique storyline. The Beverly Hillbillies remains a beloved show that continues to entertain audiences to this day. And make yourself comfortable. Oh, sit down. The casting process for the Beverly Hillbillies involved auditions where each key actor was chosen based on their unique talents and chemistry with the other cast members. Buddy Ebsen was selected for the role of Jed Clampett because of his charm and comedic timing, while Irene Ryan impressed the casting directors with her portrayal of Granny's feisty character. Max Bear Jr. won the role of Jethro by showcasing his comedic skills and physical comedy abilities. Lastly, Donna Douglas stood out in her audition for the role of Ellie May with her innocence and southern charm. Chemistry tests were conducted to ensure the ensemble cast worked well together, leading to the formation of a cohesive and hilarious team that would bring the Clampett family to life on screen. Oh, my wife is very upset that I got the estate next to ours with the Clampets. Says I don't even know what kind of... The directorial vision behind the 1962 TV series, The Beverly Hillbillies, was to create a comedic and lighthearted portrayal of rural characters adjusting to life in a wealthy Beverly Hills environment. The director's approach involved using humor and exaggerated character traits to entertain audiences. Their creative influences likely drew from classic comedic styles of the time, such as slapstick and physical comedy. In collaborating with the cast and crew, the director likely encouraged improvisation and the development of unique character quirks to enhance the show's comedic impact. Overall, the director aimed to bring the story to life through a blend of humor, charm, and character-driven antics. Great! Pearl, what's the matter with you? Man crazy, always was. What drives you? The production of the 1962 TV series The Beverly Hillbillies involved intricate set design work to create the rural aesthetic of the Clampett family's home juxtaposed with the opulence of Beverly Hills mansions. Filming primarily took place at the Desailu Cahuenga studio, where sound stages were transformed into the iconic log cabin 
and lavish mansion sets. The challenge of maintaining authenticity, while highlighting the stark differences in the characters' surroundings, required careful attention to detail. To achieve the look of their crude homestead, the set designers incorporated actual wooden logs and rustic furnishings. For the mansion scenes, luxurious decor and elegant furniture were used to showcase the Clampett's newfound wealth. The seamless transition between these two contrasting environments added depth to the storytelling of the series. The show also faced logistical challenges in filming outdoor scenes portraying the vast landscapes of Beverly Hills and the rural South. To address this, the production crew utilized practical effects and matte painting techniques to create expansive vistas without leaving the studio lot. By blending these visual effects with live action shots, they effectively captured the essence of both settings. In terms of technology, the Beverly Hillbillies made innovative use of color television, which was still relatively new at the time. The vibrant colors enhanced the contrast between the rural simplicity of the Clampett family and the extravagance of their Beverly Hills neighbors. This pioneering use of color contributed to the show's visual appeal and set it apart from other series of its time. Overall, through meticulous set design, creative location choices, and innovative technological approaches, the production of the Beverly Hillbillies successfully brought to life the comedic tale of a family's rise from rags to riches in an engaging and visually captivating manner. The musical score and soundtrack of the 1962 TV series, the Beverly Hillbillies were carefully crafted to enhance the show's narrative and emotional tone. Composers and musicians worked together to create music that captured the essence of the show, blending elements of country, folk, and comedic tones to match the humorous and lighthearted nature of the series. The use of banjos, fiddles, and other traditional instruments added an authentic hillbilly feel to the music, immersing viewers in the world of the Clampett family. The upbeat and folksy tunes underscored the hilarious misadventures of the characters, bringing an extra layer of charm and humor to the show. Composers aimed to create a soundtrack that not only complemented the storyline, but also became a memorable and integral part of the viewing experience for audiences. Through their collaboration, the music of the Beverly Hillbillies succeeded in setting the perfect mood for each episode, leaving a lasting impression on viewers for years to come. This here is my daughter, Ellie Mae. How do you do? Daddy. <laughs> Granny's out in the kitchen churn. The iconic scenes in the Beverly Hillbillies often highlight the contrast between the Clampett family's rustic background and the glamorous life of Beverly Hills. One memorable moment is when Jed Clampett first arrives in Beverly Hills. The direction captures his awe as he gazes at the opulent homes, showcasing the humor in his simple down-to-earth nature against the backdrop of wealth. The actors, particularly Buddy Ebsen as Jed, deliver performances that blend innocence with curiosity, making the audience laugh and sympathize with their culture shock. Another standout scene occurs when Granny tries to cook her traditional dishes in a high-end kitchen. The cinematography uses close-ups to emphasize her bewilderment with modern appliances, enhancing the comedic effect. The filmmakers aim to show how out of place the Clampets were, yet they maintained their charm. Max Bear Jr. as Jethro adds to the humor with his naive enthusiasm, embodying the clash of lifestyle. The impact of these moments resonates with audiences, evoking laughter and nostalgia. Commentary from the cast reveals they enjoyed showcasing the absurdity of class differences while maintaining a sense of warmth and family value. This blend of comedy and heart made the series a beloved classic, leaving lasting impressions on viewers who appreciated the simplicity and authenticity of the Clampett's way of life. I'm gonna boil these golf eggs. <laughs> the Beverly Hillbillies a TV series from 1962 had a significant cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences by portraying the Clampett family's humorous fish-out-of-water experiences as they adapted to Beverly Hill. The show influenced pop culture with its comedic take on rural versus urban lifestyles, making it relatable to a wide audience. Additionally, 
The Beverly Hillbillies sparked discussions on social and cultural themes such as wealth disparity, class dynamics and stereotypes, prompting viewers to reflect on these issues. Its enduring popularity demonstrates its lasting impact on American television and society. How about it? Oh, I, I don't think so. Oh, no trouble. What you cooking tonight, Granny? Mustard greens and possum innards. The 1962 TV series The Beverly Hillbillies received mixed critical reception upon its release. While some reviewers appreciated its humor and portrayal of rural life, others criticized it for perpetuating stereotypes. Despite this, the show garnered a strong following among audiences, becoming a hit and maintaining high viewership ratings throughout its run. Although the Beverly Hillbillies did not win major awards during its time on air, it did receive multiple nominations, including Primetime Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series and individual acting nods. These accolades helped validate the efforts of the cast and crew involved in the production, showcasing their talent and dedication to the show. For those involved in the film, such recognition meant a sense of accomplishment and acknowledgement for their hard work. Even without winning top awards, the nominations demonstrated that their contributions to the series were appreciated and valued by the industry. It also likely bolstered their confidence and motivation to continue delivering quality performances in future endeavors. Overall, while the critical reception may have been mixed, the audience support and award nominations for the Beverly Hillbillies underscored its lasting impact on television and the entertainment industry, cementing its status as a beloved classic dot dot. Exciting woman, <laughs> Don't even speak to me. During the filming of the Beverly Hillbillies, the cast and crew had many amusing moments. Buddy Ebsen, who played Jed Clampett, was known for his practical jokes on set. He once swapped Max Bear Jr.'s prop moonshine with real moonshine as a prank during a scene. Bear took a big gulp before realizing it was the real deal. Irene Ryan, who portrayed Granny, had a habit of flubbing her lines but always managed to turn it into a hilarious ad-lib that had everyone cracking up. The cast also bonded off-screen, with Donna Douglas, Nancy Culp, and the others forming close friendships that lasted long after the show ended. These anecdotes show the fun and camaraderie that made the Beverly Hillbillies a beloved classic. Yeah, well, but I couldn't help myself. Just eat up with jealousy. Same red. <laughs> the Beverly Hillbillies, a 1962 TV series, holds a significant place in film history for its portrayal of a rural family adjusting to wealth. Its influence on future filmmaking is seen in the use of fish-out-of-water scenarios. The show inspired works like The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Schitt's Creek. The legacy of the Beverly Hillbillies lives on in its humor and exploration of social class dynamics. Oh, no, ma'am. Uh, Drysdale Place is the uh, next one over yonder. Yon. As fans of the Beverly Hillbillies, we invite you to share your cherished memories and experiences with this iconic 1962 TV series that charmed audiences with its humor and warmth. Reflect on how this show has impacted your life and shaped your views on cinematic storytelling. Your unique perspective adds richness to our shared love for classic TV. Connect with fellow enthusiasts through likes, shares, and subscriptions for more delightful cinematic explorations. Let's keep the legacy alive together. Four score and seven years ago, <laughs> our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new